Okay, so hello guys. Uh, this will be the continuation of our video on investments in equity securities at fair value. So sa video na ito, magsasagot na lang tayo ng dalawang comprehensive problem in order for us to to summarize all the concepts discussed in our previous video. Okay, so for the first pl problem, kanto uh, purchased 12,000 10 peso per ordinary shares of Hoen Company for 200,000 on April 30. Okay, the equity securities meet the definition of held for trading. So, sa problem number one, alam na natin dito palang dahil sa characteristic na held for trading, this is to be classified as <coughs> fair value through profit or loss. So, ang gagawin natin sa problem na ito is to prepare the necessary journal entries and to determine the following six requirements. So, ang una natin gagawin will be journal entries muna tayo. Okay. So, ang first journal entry natin will be that is April 30, 2019. That is the uh, initial recognition of the shares. So, bumili daw si Kanto Company na 12,000 shares for 200,000 transaction cost amounted to 10,000. So, since alam naman natin na ano ay fair value to profit or loss ito, we debit investment in equity securities fair value through profit or loss. Ano ang initial measurement niya? 200,000 or 210,000? Sagot natin, 200,000 lang. Under fair value through profit or loss, hindi natin kinakapitalize ang transaction cost. Anong treatment natin sa transaction cost? Ini expense. So we debit expense 10,000 and credit cash 210,000. Okay? Next. Come December 31, 2019, the shares are quoted at 20 pesos. If the shares are sold on this date, the cost to sell would be 1 peso per share. Okay. So, nakarating agad tayo ng year end ng 2019. Now, how do we measure investments in equity securities at fair value through profit or loss at year end? That is, at fair value. No? So, yung fair value niya will be 20 or 19? Answer is 20 disregard the cost to sell of 1 peso no pampalito lang yung cost to sell na 1 peso so how do we adjust our account our investment account for this fair value change so first uh the determine lang natin yung december 31 2019 fair value ilang shares ang hawak 12000 shares times Quoted price or market value, 20 per share. So, how much is the fair value at your end? 12,000 times 20. That is 240,000. So, this is your year end measurement, correct? Now, iko compare natin siya sa balance per books. As of December 31, 2019. Magkano yung balance natin? That is, 200,000. So, dahil yun na sa libro natin, 200,000 yung balance ng investment account, magkano yung kailangan nating i-adjust sa account para dumating siya or tumaas siya to 240,000. That is, 40,000. Positive, of course. Kasi, naka 200,000 pa lang naman siya sa libro, pero ang fair value, 240. Now, Anong tawag natin kay 40,000? Since that is a positive amount, this will be what you call unrealized gain on fair value change for the year 2019, of course. Okay? So, yung 40,000 na ito, that's your unrealized gain on fair value change 2019. Okay, now, how do we journalize that on December 31, 2019? That is, debit 
investment in equity securities, fair value through profit or loss, 40, credit, unrealized gain, 40,000. Alright? Now, kung tatanungin kayo, saan ire-report itong unrealized gain na ito? Since this is fair value through profit or loss, ire-report nyo itong 40,000 sa profit or loss. Tandaan nyo yan. Okay? FVPL kasi yung classification, kaya sa profit or loss ang kanyang reporting. Okay? Yan. Sige. Next one. On January 3, 2020, 9,000 shares were sold at 22 per share. Okay. So, stop muna tayo dyan. Nagkaroon na ng bentahan. Sige. So, on January 3, that's the date of sale. Bago natin i-journalize yung pagbenta, analyze natin yung sale. How much is the proceeds? Proceeds is 9,000 okay, times 22 per share. So, proceeds amounted to 198,000 versus carrying value of shares sold. So, how do we compute for the carrying value of the shares sold? Compute natin siya dito. Okay. Magkano yung latest valuation ng shares? Di ba? 200,000 plus 40. So, that will be 240,000 pero applicable siya sa 12,000 shares. So, divide para makuha natin ang value per share. Then, multiply natin yan sa number of shares sold, 9,000. Sige. So, 240,000 divided by 12,000 shares. Magkano per share? 20. O, ba? Times 9,000 shares. So, magkano to? That is, 100. 80,000. Since the proceeds is higher than the carrying value, okay, anong tawag natin sa difference na 18,000? That is, gain on sale. Okay? Gain on sale. So, ano entry natin? So, entry natin, uh, January 3, 2020, debit cash. Proceeds, 198. Credit, investment in equity securities, fair value profit or loss, 180. Credit, gain on sale, 18,000. Okay, so yan ang entry natin on the date of sale of January 3, 2020. Klaro tayo? Ayan. Now, buburahin ko na yung mga 2019 entries natin, guys, no? Kasi I, I'm sure na nakopya na yun na to, Or I assume na nakopya nyo na. Okay? So, buburahin natin yung 2019 entries. Now, So, ano tayo? Mag-maintain tayo ng ano, running record natin for number of shares natin. Okay? Sa so, number of shares. Mag-maintain tayo ng records natin. So, number of shares. Then, value. Okay? Sige. So, nung April 30, bumili daw tayo ng 12,000 shares. Magkano yung initial measurement niya? That is... Uh, 200,000. So, ang value niya is 200,000. Tama? Then, come December 31, come December 31, nag-adjust tayo. Nag-add tayo ng 40,000 sa value niya, pero walang karagdagang number, uh, wala namang dumagdag na, na shares. Kaya, ang magiging ano natin, year end 2019, will be 12,000 shares, to 40,000. Okay? Yan ang running record noong 2019. 
Then come uh, January 3, 2020, nagbenta ka ng 9,000 shares. Okay. So, minus 9,000 shares. Magkano yung tinanggal natin na value? 198 or 180? Answer is 180. So, minus tayo ng 180 dito. Okay? Pero wag muna natin isummarize kasi nasa year 2020 pa din naman tayo. Okay? Sige. Oh, on July 1, 2020, Ho and Company affected 2 for 1 split. Stop. So, on July 1, merong share split. Gino-journalize ba natin ang share split? No. Memorandum entry lang. No? Pero kahit memorandum entry yan, may gumagalaw pa rin yan sa number of shares. Okay? So, lagay natin. Uh, instead na mag-journalize tayo, lagay agad natin dito. July 1, 2020, of course, no entry. Pero, nagkaroon ng split. 2 for 1. Anong ibig sabihin nga ulit 2 for 1? Surrender 1 share in exchange for 2 shares. Ilan na lang yung shares mo after the sale of 9,000 shares? That is, 3,000. Tama? 3,000 shares, okay? Surrender 3,000 shares, magiging 6,000. So, magkani additional shares mo? How much is the net addition? 3,000. So, mag-add ako ng 3,000 dito. Walang value yung ididikit dyan. Okay? Ayun lang. Wala kang value na ididikit sa 3,000 mo. Okay, next one. September 30, Ho and Company declared and distributed 20,000 up 20,000, 20% stock dividends when the market value of each share was 24 pesos. Oh, stock dividends. Okay. Stock dividends, gino journalize ba natin 'yan? Normally, memorandum entry lang. Tama? So, ano entry natin? No entry tayo. Pero Nakamemo. ba? Diba? Kasi ano yun eh. Madadagdagan ulit natin ang number of shares natin. On September 30, 20%. Tama? Therefore, ang magiging basihan ng 20% stock dividends mo will be your number of shares prior to September 30. That will be 3,000 plus another 3,000 of the share split times 20%. Ilan yung additional shares natin? 1,200. Meron ba tayong value ididikit? Answer is, wala. Eh sir, ano yung market value per share na 24? Pampalito. Huwag nyong gamitin yan. No? Kasi ang stock dividends, memorandum entry lang yan. Gets? Okay. So, nakikita nyo, running record siya, no? Maganda yan. Sige. The Board of Directors of Ho and Company passed a resolution on November 1 to the effect that the shareholders shall contribute 10 pesos for each share held. Kaya ako gumawa ng running record kasi magiging basihan din yung number of shares netong 10 peso na to. Anong tawag natin sa 10 pesos na to? This is your special assessment fees. My journal entry ba? Answer is yes. Kailan nagkaroon ng special assessment? November 1. So, lagay natin dito. November 1, 2020. O, debit. Ano tayo? Debit tayo ng investment in equity securities fair value through profit or loss. Magkano kaya yung binayaran mo? Okay. Bilangin natin kung ilan yung shares natin. That is, uh, 6,000 plus 1,200. Ilan yan? 7,200 shares. Times 10 pesos. So, magkano yung special assessment? 72,000 credit cash. 72,000. Clear? O kailangan ulitin? O sige, ulitin na lang natin. Saan mo nakuha yung 72,000, sir? First, ang ginawa natin, binilang muna natin yung number of shares natin bago mag uh, November 1. Diba? So, that is 12 minus 9 plus 3 plus 1,200. Diyan natin nakuha yung 7,200 shares. Then, multiply it to that 
10 peso per share share assessment. Claro? Ayan. Okay? Pero, lagay din natin siya sa running record natin, no? Para hindi tayo malito sa dulo. Okay. November 1, nagdagdag tayo ng 72,000 sa kanyang carrying value, pero walang nadagdagan number of shares, which is okay lang naman. Okay lang yun. Uh, okay lang naman, guys. No? Okay lang yun. Okay. Next. Hoen Company declared 5 peso cash dividends per share on December 15, 2020 to shareholders of record January 15 to be paid on January 31. Okay. So, since my cash dividends, meron tayong entry ulit. Anong date yan? December 15, 2020. Ano entry natin nung nagdeklara ng cash dividends ito? Si Ho and Company. That is, debit. Debit cash? No. Kasi, December 15 pa lang ngayon. So, debit. Dividends. Receivable. Magkano, sir? Titignan ulit natin kung ilan yung shares natin. Di ba? Since wala namang dumagdag nung November 1, ilang shares yung kanina? Di ba? Uh, 7,200 shares times 5 pesos per share. So, the amount of cash dividends is... 36,000 credit dividend income. 36,000. Saan natin nire-report ang dividend income? Di ba profit or loss? So, sa PNL ang reporting yan. Okay? Ipapasok ko ba siya dito sa running record natin? No. Wala naman ako nakikita ang investment account sa ano eh. Uh, December 15 eh. Tama ba ako? Ayan. Di ba? Oh, last paragraph. On December 31, Hoen Company shares are quoted at 15 per share. If the shares are sold on this date, cost to sell would be 1.20 per share. Paki-ignore na yan. Pampalito lang yang si cost to sell. Alam naman natin, alam nating lahat na fair value ang kanya measurement at year end. Diba? So, for December 31, compute natin ang fair value. That is, Magkano? That is, 7,200 shares, di ba? 7,200 shares times 15 per share. So, magkano? 7,200 times 15. 108,000. Versus balance per books. The same date, December 31, 2020. Nakita nyo na yung, yung importansya ng ating running records, guys. No? Yan kasi ang magiging basihan ng balance per books natin. So, for the balance per books, summarize natin yung nangyari. Ilang shares meron? 7,200. Magkano yung valuation? 240 minus 180 plus 72,000. So, that is 132,000. So, the carrying value or the balance per books is actually at 132,000. How much is the difference? 108,000 minus 132, 24,000. However, mas malaki balance per books. Kailangan daw nating bawasan. Kaya negative. Anong tawag natin kay 24,000? That is, unrealized loss on fair value change 2020. Ayos? Pang 2020 yan. So, ano entry natin? Debit. Unrealized loss 24,000 credit investment in equity securities fair value profit or loss 24000 that will be your entry december 31 2020 
Natapos natin yung entry ng problem number 1. Journal entries pa lang yan guys. Wala pa talaga tayo nasasagot ang requirements. Okay, ready na. So, okay na tayo. Nakuha natin yung mga journal entries. Sagutan na natin ang mga kailangan sagutan. Requirement 1. What would be the initial measurement of investment in Ho and Company, April 30? Ano sagot natin dyan? Yan yung 200,000. Kasi fair value, ang transaction cost, the expense. Klaro? Number two, amount to be presented as investment in Ho and Company on December 31, 2019. Ano ang sagot natin kanina? Doong 2019 natin. That is... That is, 12,000 times 20. 240,000. Unrealized gain on fair value change in relation to Ho and Company shares to be reported for the year 2019. Since mas mataas ang fair value at year end kesa sa balance per books, meron tayong 40,000. Unrealized gain. Clear? Okay. Number four. How much shall be recognized as gain or loss on sale of investment? Ano sagot natin kanina? Sana natatandaan nyo, no? Ano sagot natin kanina? That is, 18,000 gain or loss. Gain. So, number four natin is 18,000 gain. Nakuha natin yan sa journal entries kanina. Okay? Number five. How much shall be reported as dividend income? Magkano yung cash dividends natin? 36,000. Lahat ng entries, ay, lahat ng entries, sorry. Lahat ng sagot natin sa requirements, nasa entries lang din natin. Okay? Sige. Number six. How much shall be recognized as unrealized gain or loss due to fair value change in the income statement for the year ended December 31, 2020? Sagot natin is 24,000. Gain or loss? Unrealized loss. Okay? That's your first problem. Lahat ng requirements, nasagot na natin through the journal entries. Okay. Let's now move on to the last problem. Problem number two. O, this time, mas maikli yung problem, mas masaya, no? Okay. So, yun nga lang, bumawi sa number of requirements, dumami siya. Pero okay lang, kaya yan. Sige. So, kung titignan natin yung problem number 2, nasasabi niya ng problem number 2, the shares do not meet the definition on held for trading. Therefore, the management made an irrevocable choice to subsequently measure the shares at FVOCI. So, si problem number 2, alam nating mag-FVOCI tayo. Dapat natatandaan nyo from our previous video yung mga characteristics nila. Kasi yung mga characteristics na yon yan ang makakatulong sa inyo para masagutan ang 8 requirements. Okay? Sige. Let's start. Journal entries. O, oh, eto mas ma mas mababasa nyo ah. By the way, the same problem yan guys. Okay? The same problem to. Kasi oh, maliit siya kanina, biglang lumaki lang. Okay? Sige. So, journal entry will start on April 30. Pwede sa task ko nalang lagay para tuloy-tuloy tayo. Okay lang? Okay, sige. Nar naririnig ko yung mga iniisip nyo eh. Pwede naman. Okay, sige. So, on April 30. Honey Company purchased 12,000 shares of B Company for 200,000. Transaction cost amounted to 10,000. So, dahil alam naman natin FVOCI ito, debit tayo, investment in equity securities, FVOCI. How much is the initial recognition? 200,000 or 210,000? Sagot natin is 210,000. Kasi, under fair value through OCI, kinakapitalize naman natin ang transaction cost. Credit cash. 210. Nakuha ba? 
Ganun lang, ha? Ganun lang, guys, ha? Pag FVOCI, kinakapitalize ang transaction cost naman. Kaya nakita nyo, wala tayong expense. Okay? Sige. Oh, fast forward, December 31, 2019. The shares are quoted at 20. If the shares are sold on this date, the cost to sell would be 1 peso per share. Okay. Ano ulit ang year-end measurement natin? Di ba fair value pa rin? Therefore, paki ignore ang cost to sell na piso. Oh, magkano fair value on this date? 12,000 shares times 20. Magkano? 240,000 versus balance per books. The same date? Magkano yan? Uh, 210 thousand. Ito yun guys ah. Ayan yan. Ayan. Okay. How much is the difference? 30,000. Mas mataas ang fair value. Anong tawag kay 30,000? That is unrealized gain. On fair value change, no? Lagay natin on fair value change. Pero saan ire-report ang 30,000? Profit or loss, P uh, OCI. Answer, OCI naman. Okay ba? OCI ah, kasi FVOCI tayo. Okay. How do we journalize that? Dito ko nalang lagay sa ano niya, tabi. So, on December 31, 2019, debit investment in... Equity Securities, FVOCI. 30,000, credit, unrealized gain. OCI. 30,000. O, next. B Company, Paid 6 peso cash dividends per share to its shareholders during 2020. Stop. Okay. Nagbayad daw ng dividendo. Ano entry natin? Debit? Cash? Magkano? Ilan shares natin? Diba 12,000 pa rin? 12,000 shares times 6 pesos. So that will be 72,000. Saan natin nire-report ang dividend? Diba PNL pa rin? So, credit, dividend, income, which is in profit or loss. 72,000. Okay. On December 31, the shares are quoted at 13 pesos. If the shares are sold on this date, the cost to sell would be 150 per share. Oh, year-end measurement? Fair value. So, paki Ignore lang din yung cost to sell ulit. Okay? Sige. December 31, 2020, fair value. 12,000 shares times 13. Magkano to? 12,000 times 13. That is 156,000. Okay? Versus balance per books December 31, 2020 May gumalaw ba sa investment account natin? Sa 2020? Wala. Kasi dividends lang yan. Therefore, kung magkano yung year-end measurement last year, yun pa rin yun. Which is, 240,000. How much is the difference? That is, 84,000. Since mas malaki itong si balance per books, babawasan natin. So, this is unrealized loss na sa OCI natin i-re-report ulit. Okay? O, ano entry? Ano entry natin? December 31, 2020. That is, debit unrealized loss. OCI, 84,000. Credit, 
Investment in Equity Securities, FVOCI. That is 84,000. Okay? So, ayun na. December 31 natin. Debit tayo ng Unrealized Loss, OCI, 84. Credit Investment in Equity Securities, Fair Value, OCI, that is 84,000. Okay? So, now, di ba nabanggit ko sa previous video natin na ang OCI ay shareholders equity component, therefore cumulative. Kung i-analyze naman kasi natin ang T-account neto ni unrealized gain at loss, lalagay na lang natin as unrealized gain or loss OCI. Noong December 31, December 31, teka, usog lang natin. Hindi magkasya-kasya. Okay, so unrealized gain or loss OCI. Nung December 31, 2019, Magkano yung pinasok natin? ba 30,000? So, nag-credit tayo. Tapos, pagdating ng December 31, 2020, ano nangyari? Biglang nag-debit. So, pasok siya dito naman. 84,000. Now, kung tatanungin tayo, magkano cumulative balance ng unrealized gain or loss na nasa OCI? Sasagutin natin ay 54,000 debit. Okay. So, ito yung balance natin as of December 31, 2020. 54,000. Yung 84,000 changed during the year 2020. 54,000 cumulative siya. Therefore, it includes the year 2019. Okay? Malinaw tayo? Okay. Buburahin ko yung 2020 entries natin, guys, no? In preparation for the 2021 entry. Para mas malinaw. On January 3, 2021, 9,000 shares were sold at 15 per share. Ang procedures natin in accounting for sale of FVOCI is... Different from FVPL, guys, no? Kasi may steps tayong susundan. Now, ready na? Ang first step natin kasi is to update all the FVOCI shares to their updated fair value. Okay. So, first step natin, na January 3, 2021. Ia-update natin. Oh, magkano ang fair value ng lahat? Not just the 9,000 shares, but 12,000 shares. 12,000 shares times 15 per share. Magkano yan? That is 180,000 versus balance per books. Magkano yung balance per books natin? That is yung balance per books natin uh, ang sagot natin kanina is ano yun? 156 Tama? Ayan. 156,000. Okay. How much is the difference? 24,000. <clears throat> ano tawag dito? Unrealized gain na ipapasok sa OCI. Therefore, on January 3, 2021, nagpasok tayo ng 24,000. Ayan. Okay? Then, Entry natin is, ano entry natin? January 3, 2021, debit, investment in equity securities, FVOCI, that is 24,000 credit, unrealized gain, OCI. Updated na lahat ng 12,000 shares natin. Then, the second, the second step, Account for the sale. 
Pero dito, wala na kayong makikiki, wala na kayong makikitang gain or loss, no? So simply, debit tayo ng cash. 9,000 shares times 15. That is 135,000 credit investment in equity securities fair value OCI 135,000. Ay, sir, wala ng gain or loss? Yes, wala na. Why? Kasi nung first step, in-update natin lahat ng shares to 15 pesos. Am I correct? O, di ba? Then, nung ni-record natin yung sale, naka 15 pesos pa din. Therefore, no gain, no loss na. Kasi recorded na eh. O, di ba? Ayan. So, tapos natin ang entries until January 3, 2021. O, oh, ready na ang sagutan ng mga requirements? Dapat lang ready na. Okay. Initial measurement on April 30, 2019. Our answer? 210,000. Amount to be presented as investment on December 31, 2019. Our answer? 240,000. Unrealized gain on fair value changes to be reported in the Statement of Comprehensive Income for the year 2019. Ang sagot natin dyan, since ang pagkakabanggit naman is Statement of Comprehensive Income, our answer is 30,000. Unrealized gain. Saan report? OCI portion of the Statement of Comprehensive Income. Okay? Sa OCI section siya ng Statement of Comprehensive Income. Number four, dividend income. Sagot natin kanina sa entry, 72,000. Unrealized gain or loss on fair value change to be reported in the OCI section of the Statement of Comprehensive Income for the year ended December 31, 2020. Oh, may babalikan tayo guys ha. Tignan nyo. Take note ha, Statement of Comprehensive Income yan. Kung mapapansin nyo, noong December 31, 2020, merong naka-84, merong naka-54. Alin dyan ang tamang sagot doon sa requirement na yun? Pag nakita nyo movement siya during the year, sa Statement of Comprehensive Income ang kanyang reporting. Pag cumulative balance, nasa Statement of Financial Position naman siya. Okay? Nakukuha ba ako? So, ulitin natin ha. Yung changes during the year sa Statement of Comprehensive Income under OCI Section... Ang cumulative balance naman ng OCI unrealized gains and losses natin, sa statement of financial position siya, i-report. -re so, kung babalikan na natin, saan mo siya, or ano alin dun sa dalawa ang sasagutin natin for requirement, number 5. Answer is, 84,000 unrealized loss. Okay? 84,000 unrealized loss yan. Yung 54,000, sasagutin nyo yan kapag ang binanggit na financial statement ay statement of financial position. Gets? Okay. How much should be reported as gain or loss on fair value changes in the statement of financial position? O, di ba? Yan lang yung kakasabi ko kanina. That is, 54,000 unrealized loss. Clear na clear? O, di ba? Ganun lang. <clears throat> Keyword natin kasi is statement of financial position. Cumulative. Statement of comprehensive income, change during the year only. O, number 7 and 8. How much shall be recognized as gain or loss on sale of investment? Sagot natin dyan, guys, is zero. Pag FVOCI ang binenta natin, hindi tayo nagre-recognize ng gain or loss on sale. Lahat sa OCI ang punta. Nakuha ba ako? Okay? Sige. Then for number 8, what amount shall be recycled from OCI to retained earnings? Okay. 
So, bakit may nagkakaroon ng recycling dito, sir? Kasi, okay, itong tatandaan nyo, ha? Kapag ano kasi, kapag OCI shares ito, di ba sa OCI napupunta yung mga unrealized gains and losses? Pero kapag nagkakaroon na ng disposals, yung mga nasa OCI, hindi pwedeng i-reclassify to profit or loss. Didiretso ng retained earnings yan. So, magkano yung i-recycle natin, sir? Balik tayo sa entries natin. Tignan nyo, ha? After the date of sale, magkano na lang balance nung unrealized gain or loss OCI? That is, 30,000. Debit, credit. Debit. Mas malaki pa rin kasi yung ano, debit niya, di ba? Now, tatandaan nyo, itong 30,000 na ito, attributable sa lahat ng 12,000 shares. Ilan lang ang nabenta? Ilan lang ang nabenta? Di ba 9,000 lang? Therefore, ipoproportionate lang natin. The amount to be recycled from OCI to retained earnings will be 30,000 times 9,000 over 12,000. So, magkano to? That is, 22,500. 22,500 yan. Ano entry? Debit, retained earnings. 22,500. Credit, unrealized. Gain or loss, OCI. So, kung nasa T-account yan, mag-credit siya, kaya ang matitira na lang ay 7,500. O, ba diba? Pero, ang tinatanong lang kasi sa number number 8 natin, magkano yung i-recycle sa OCI? Ang sagot natin is 22,500. Paano ulit na kuha, sir? 30,000 times 9,000 over 12. Gets? Madali lang. O, di ba? And that's the end of our lesson for equity securities at fair value. So, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have appreciated the learnings and you appreciated and enjoyed the process of learning. Our next video will be Investment in Associate.